Yo, what's going on guys? It's Rob here from Show and Showdown and we are back with Anime Gauntlets. I know it's been a while, but let's get right into it. So this gauntlet I've been seeing going crazy all over Twitter. We have Avatar Aang running the gauntlet. This is going to be a tough one because first up we have Deku. This was highly, highly controversial on Twitter. If you think about Deku going up against Aang, right? The first thing that comes to mind is, well, Aang has access to air bending and he also has access to water bending. Now, one of the first things that everyone was talking about was the fact that Aang would be able to remove the breath from Deku. We saw that a lot of the airbenders, especially in the Legend of Korra, were able to literally remove the air from people's bodies, which would obviously would create a vacuum in the lungs. It's done. It will suffocate them. Dangerous technique for Deku to be in. But to a lot of naysayers credit, Aang was never shown to use this type of technique, at least when he was in that form. Now, let's look at the gauntlet again. As you guys already know, when I normally do these gauntlet videos, I like to give people their prime abilities because I think that's the most fair unless it's stated otherwise. Now, I I don't really know the context of this gauntlet. It could be different, but if we are going off of prime Aang and I'm talking about adult Aang, then I got to go with Aang beating Deku. Now, hold on. I know Deku has eight different quirks. Deku is more powerful in sense that he would literally be able to use gear shift and Fajin and he would be able to use black whip. I don't even think smoke screen would really be useful and maybe float. A, a lot of those twerks wouldn't really even be useful, but obviously one for all would be the biggest hit. All right. If he's able to land an attack on Aang, it's pretty much game over. Over because Deku is just so much stronger offensively than Aang. But the issue is Aang has a deeper bag of hacks in the sense that adult Aang was shown to be able to blood bend. I don't think Deku has anything in his arsenal that would allow him to break through the blood bending ability from Aang. I think everything else, speed wise, you gotta go with Deku. IQ, you could probably say if we're talking about adult Aang and Deku, then it'd probably be somewhat equal. But this gauntlet has kid Aang. This is a big difference to me because I don't know if Kid Ang really had access to blood bending, and obviously we did not see the air bending technique where he's able to draw the air from their body and suffocate them like Zaheer from Legend of Korra. We did not see that from Ang. So if we're going off of Kid Ang, I agree with the My Hero fans. Deku would definitely beat Ang. Ang was stopped in round one. If we're going with everybody in their prime state, I think adult Ang having the ability to blood bend Deku would be able to defeat Deku. It wouldn't be easy, but the blood bending is something I don't think Deku has an answer for let's move on to round two at round two we have yuta from jujutsu kaisen this one is crazy yuta is in the conversation with gojo it really is gojo's obviously that rank one but yuta is only a little little half step off i mean yuta's that powerful in the jujutsu kaisen universe one of the strongest sorcerers we love ang being able to really take down fire lord ozai but at the end of the day yuta has one of the strongest cursed spirits in the entire series in rika he has one of the highest reserves of curse energy and I don't see how Aang is really going to have the ability to fight something that in theory he would not really even be able to see. That is where the major issue comes in. Now again, if we're talking adult Aang and he's able to blood bend, that is where it would get a little sticky for Yuta. But at the end of the day, if Yuta's getting hurt, Rika is still putting in work. So obviously <laughs> Aang is stopping in round two for me. I don't see Aang getting past Yuta at all, but you guys let me know down in the comment section below if you think he does win. At number three, they put in Tanjiro. For some reason now i'm not too familiar with manga tanjiro so i'm not gonna mention manga tanjiro too much but i do know that he does get stronger that's about it now maybe you could say that tanjiro is faster than ang and i probably would agree maybe depending on the technique but my issue here is that tanjiro is known for water breathing and sun breathing and things like that i mean that is literally what ang does i mean <laughs> at the end of the day all of these water and sun breathing techniques are something that ang would eat easily be able to counter because that's how he's built. That's how he comes. He can destroy everybody that's using elemental techniques against him because he controls all four elements. But here's what I'll say about Tanjiro. Manga Tanjiro, because I heard that he's more powerful, maybe I would give him the edge over Kid Aang just because Kid Aang is still young. He doesn't have the blood bending and all that. But if we're talking adult Aang, I don't really know. I got to see more about Manga Tanjiro. At least for anime Tanjiro, he's getting dropped off though. He's definitely, definitely getting dropped off. Manga Tanjiro, I got to see a 
little bit more because Dal Eng is that serious. Round four, I mean, pack it up, man. <laughs> they put Naruto at round four. This is overkill. No shot whatsoever. We love Eng, but come on. Even if he's able to suffocate Naruto, even if he's able to bloodbend Naruto, how is he stopping Kurama from popping out? That's going to be a major, major issue for Eng. I don't think Eng, and even in adult form, prime Eng, no Eng is beating Naruto. And in round five, we have Monkey D. Luffy. Now, clearly, Future Sight Observation Hockey, Armament Hockey, Conquerors, Gear 5. I mean, <laughs> it's overkill. We love Aang, but he can't even contend. I mean, listen, Luffy was literally grabbing lightning out of the sky. So, <laughs> I mean, if Aang wants to try lightning bending, I mean, if he wants to try any type of elemental bending, it's going to be an issue. If he's about to blood bend him, Luffy can see that it's happening in the future and speed blitz him. I mean, there's way, way, way too many abilities that Luffy has in his arsenal that would make Aang really scared to fight him, whether he's a kid or an adult. So if it's kid Aang, he doesn't make it past round one. If it's adult Aang, he makes it to round two and stops at Yuta. But in a strange way, I think he still beats Tanjiro. I don't know why Tanjiro is after Yuta, unless he did something crazy in the manga that I don't know of. But let's move on to the next gauntlet. Red hair Shanks is running the gauntlet, man. You know what time it is, all right? <laughs> one of the greatest hockey users in One Piece history. Yes, I said that. I know what it is. I know what time it is because in round one, we have Tanjiro. I don't care how sun breathing, water breathing. We just spoke about that earlier. None of it matters in Shanks' eyes. Shanks has one of the greatest displays of future sight observation hockey that we've ever seen. I mean, the man literally saw what Kid was about to do, saw the entire play by play. It looked like he was seeing a whole minute into the future and was able to react instantaneously, not only destroying all of the Kid pirates, but literally had them scared, running for their lives, swimming for their lives, trying to get out of there. Something that is so, so dangerous. I can't see Tanjiro pulling that off. If you swap Tanjiro and Shanks in that scenario, is Tanjiro saying Captain Kid one hit KO? I don't see that happening. I don't know what he did in the manga, but I need a Demon Slayer fan out there to prove to me that Tanjiro is boxing the entire Kid Pirates with one hit because that's Shanks. In round two, we have Akame from Akame Got Killed. Now, this is an interesting one because we know that Akame has the ability to kill somebody with one hit. The question is, is Akame getting that hit on Shanks? The answer is no. I love Akame, one of the best swordsmen we have seen of all time. But if you're talking about Shanks rivaling Mihawk in terms of swordsmanship, and obviously Mihawk is quote unquote, the world's strongest swordsman in One Piece, then we have to understand that swordsmanship is not going to be a great avenue for Akame to try to beat Shanks. Obviously Akame was able to take down as death but shanks is no scrub the hockey is so powerful it took down one of the greatest in the worst generation we just have to stop downplaying shanks hockey here i think akami is a beast but not a shanks level beast moving on we have zoro from one piece another disrespectful blasphemous spot you know <laughs> i respect the zoro fans out there because like i said zoro fans and itachi fans are the two most diehard fan bases that i've ever ever had to see and at any moment at any chance zoro fan will definitely try to squeeze zoro into those top tiers of one piece i see what's going on all right i understand it you guys love zoro it's all love but he's not seeing shanks i don't care what he did against king i don't care what he's doing in egghead against rob lucci or any i don't care about any of that he still has a long way to go before you start talking about shanks level because shanks is using moves like kamusari aka divine departure aka the same move Roger used against the likes of Odin and we still have to see Zoro surpass Odin's level of hockey. We still need to see Zoro surpass maybe some Gorosei members like Saint Ethan. There still are a lot of swordsmen out there in the One Piece world that we have to compare Zoro to before he makes it to Shanks or are on Shanks's level. We love Zoro but he does not deserve to be here. At number four we have Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. Now you guys know what I always say about Gojo. Obviously he has limitless. Obviously he's able to attack with ease because he has the six eyes but you want to know something if it's gojo's domain expansion i think shanks stops at gojo 100 percent but toji gave me faith Toji gave me faith against Gojo. Now, obviously that was a younger Gojo, but he gave me faith in the fact that there may be a chance to stop Gojo if you have prep time. And I feel like if you give Shanks a little bit of prep time, he may be able to come out on top because listen, even though if Gojo does not give Shanks prep time, Shanks will create his own prep time with Future Sight. All right, that is what Shanks does. Future Sight Observation Hockey is the same prep time that Toji had to prep for Gojo, okay? So again, I love Gojo. He's obviously a beast. He's obviously powerful, but in the event of 
of prep time. I think that Shanks would definitely be able to react to his techniques before the domain expansion comes out. But if the fight starts and the first move that Gojo drops is domain expansion and he gets that off and Shanks falls victim to it, yes, Gojo wins. I don't know if the fight's gonna go down that way though. If we're being honest, if Shanks is able to look into the future like he did against Captain Kid and see what's going to happen, see that the domain expansion is actually going to come out and react before it happens, I think it can be devastating for Gojo because we've seen somebody like Toji do it. He does not even need to touch Gojo to hurt him. The hockey will move through the body to do it for him. The hockey will move through the sword to do it for him. He doesn't need to land an attack on Gojo to hurt him. In round five, for some reason, Marshall D. Teach, aka Blackbeard is here. I, I I don't understand why. Let, let's talk about something. You know, there are a lot of One Piece fans out there that have Blackbeard at top one in the verse. And I'm not one of them. I do think Blackbeard has a ways to go before he starts getting in those top three conversations. I do think he's incredible as a Devil Fruit user, but hockey has always been a question when you're talking about Blackbeard. And I've said this before, Kaido has stated that hockey transcends all. And he's proven it by talking about Roger's hockey and how Roger was able to literally bring the world to heel because of his supreme mastery of hockey. This is something that Blackbeard has to get down before I start putting him in those crazy conversations yes as a devil fruit user he's incredible but that's really his bread and butter when you think about blackbeard you talk about his devil fruits first and then you bring up the hockey later on when were we seeing hockey feats against s hawk who had him on the ropes a little bit even when Rayleigh pulled up and was flexing the conquerors hockey blackbeard really didn't have an answer yes we know Rayleigh said that he was too old to fight blackbeard at that time but also blackbeard thought he was not ready for Rayleigh. there are two sides to that coin that people are kind constantly forgetting. We love Blackbeard. I do think he's powerful. I think end of series Blackbeard is going to be in that conversation, but Blackbeard right now, Shanks is dropping him off. I don't care about what scar situation people want to bring up. We know what it really is. Shanks knows that Blackbeard is formidable, but he also knows that he can beat Blackbeard because if he didn't think he could do that, there's no reason why he would go to Marine Ford, stop the war by challenging the Marines plus the Blackbeard Pirates. He said, we will fight all of y'all. And Blackbeard said, listen, I I'm not ready. And we know Shanks is on timing. He was ready to fight Mihawk on multiple occasions. He was ready to fight Blackbeard on multiple occasions. He had Admiral Aramaki running for his life. To me, I love Blackbeard. I think he's powerful, but he's not in this type of conversation. And in round six, we have Minato Namikaze from Naruto. Obviously the fourth Hokage. Minato in base is getting destroyed by Shanks. Respectfully, I don't think Minato is weak. Obviously he's called the Yellow Flash for a reason, but I think that Shanks' future sight would be the main Achilles heel to Minato. Minato is a beast and he's called the yellow flash because he's able to outspeed everybody but if somebody has future sight minato in base is going to have an issue with that a hundred percent but on the flip side edo tensei minato breaking out nine tails chakra mode that's where it's like okay <laughs> let's pull it back now i can see where minato would be beating shanks in that scenario let's move on to the next gauntlet here we have gojo running the gauntlet very very interesting here first up in round one we have sakuna <laughs> you know uh certain things happen you know if sakuna is allowed if i speak let's move on to round two boroshiki from boruto going up against gojo i think that obviously boroshiki is amazing he was boxing with people like sasuke we get all of that but if domain expansion drops round two is a breeze for gojo i don't think boruto has an answer for domain expansion in round three we have monkey d luffy i think that luffy will be able to box with gojo outside of the domain expansion once the domain expansion comes out it's gonna be an issue luffy would literally have to use future sight predict that he's going to be using domain expansion and then speed blitz and take out gojo before it comes out i don't know if he will have that much time to do so because we talked about toji being able to take down gojo with prep time and i said that shanks may be able to do it because he will have significant prep time considering that his future side observation hockey is way longer than most characters but to me i don't think luffy has future sight on the level of shanks all right it looks like luffy can only see a couple of seconds into the future shanks it looked like he had a whole minute so it's a little different and that's why 
why I think I'm going to have to give Gojo the okay here in round three. In round four, you have Naruto. I think it's probably the same thing. If you're talking about his regular base standard Gojo, I think Naruto could definitely beat Gojo. But I think the issue comes in when domain expansion happens. I think that's really the issue. A lot of people on this list are very, very powerful. But what would they do in the event of a domain expansion? And that's where I don't know if Naruto really has an ability in his arsenal to contend with domain expansion. I think Sasuke would be a better matchup against Gojo, considering he has the Renegon, he will be able to move through dimensions and doing certain things. I think that's where it would be very, very interesting. Naruto, even though he's more powerful than Sasuke in the Naruto verse, the hacks going up against Gojo is just a worse matchup for me. In round five, we have Natsu from Fairy Tail. Now, this is where it gets interesting because I think that Natsu, with the abilities that he has in his arsenal, he's probably going to be suffering the same fate as Luffy and Naruto. The domain expansion is going to be an issue. But we have seen Natsu fight against opponents like Zeref and even Ultir that literally are using multi-dimensional attacks and he's countering them. So if you're a Fairy Tail fan that wants to make the case that Natsu has been able to counter 5D attacks in his verse and say that Gojo would have an issue with that, I'm willing to hear you out. But I just think domain expansion is a tough technique for a lot of these characters to get involved with. In round six, you have Saitama going up against Gojo. Now, me personally, I'm going with Saitama. Once you see Saitama kicking away portals and literally sneezing away Jupiter, that's really all you need to see. Infinity domain expansion is not going to work against Saitama because we've literally seen him move space. He moved space, y'all. At that point, he's beyond whatever Gojo's throwing at. And in round seven, you see Goku, aka Goat Ku. Can he beat Goku? Um, No, he can't. <laughs> we all love Gojo around here, but when you're talking about Goku, especially in true Ultra Instinct match or Ultra Instinct and having these abilities where he can literally use Hakai as we've seen in the manga, he has the ability to actually erase things. Destruction energy. The question really should be, what will Gojo do against Hakai? What will Gojo do against Goku's crazy power level so strong that anything around him is literally going to be crumbling just off of him powering up? Goku's fight against Jiren was literally shaking the world of Void that literally had nothing in it. They were that powerful. They were shaking nothing. They were shaking a vacuum, essentially. Gojo my fate in Goku's presence, <laughs> with all due respect. But you guys let me know down in the comment section below which gauntlets you agree with or disagree with. I want to see, especially with the Aang one. That one was very, very interesting. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.